And welcome to Flash and Friends. It's uh, our weekly podcast we do here at the Beasley Broadcast Group, or as we like to call it, um, the Fishbowl. The Fishbowl is the Pivot Studio. Hey, mm-hmm. your headphones look good. I'm glad you, you like, switched out of the other yeah, ones. The other I ones were not looking Kind of made good. me look like I was uh, working out an episode of the Star Wars. Maybe like <laughs> yes. I was going to be a, a body double for Princess Leia. <laughs> so I had to get rid of those. Had to do it. These look just fine. That's that's good. So you have a big night tonight, karaoke night. Oh my gosh, I love it. Wednesday nights at uh, at Club Dubai have taken off now. Wednesday night karaoke night, we do it every Wednesday. Like I was telling you last week, you know, they rearranged the whole club. We've got the DJ area up on the stage now, so we've got a nice big stage. We've got a nice big screen for the karaoke words. we got the uh, the lighting and everything situated, the sound system Sounds good. Now, you know, if you if you follow karaoke or you like to do karaoke. If you follow karaoke. Yeah, yeah, yeah a lot yeah. of people, I mean, you'd be surprised how serious a lot of people are about sure. their karaoke. You know, as, as been, they been doing it. They go to the different as, places that oh, do yeah. it. They have a Monday night place, a Tuesday night place. Sure. One of the biggest things that irritate karaoke folks is if the sound is bad. Okay. And I'm, you know, I'm sort of a stickler on sound. So when I'm, you know, you'll see a lot of people that'll go, you'll go to some shows someplace and, you know, whatever, whatever the levels are, they just leave us. So they'll put you on and then they just go. And if the music's too loud, then you have to sing loud over the music. Or if the mic's too loud over the music, you know what I mean? I like to mix it, make it sound good. Just make it sound good. But, you know, as far as karaoke goes, I think that it should be just for people who are not really good at singing. Well, yeah. I think if you're too good, you should be disqualified from karaoke. Well, it's not if you're in a contest or something. But, you know, it's all about having a good time. Yes. That's really what it is because you'll be surprised, uh, you know, because... Believe it or not, I'm not a half bad singer. I can sing. Okay. You know, I can hold my own. You want to sing something now? Not really. Okay. But, uh, you know, we, I can hold my own in, in singing, and that's sort of how I got into it. One day uh, in during uh, a Thanksgiving, I was going through a divorce, and uh, I had had turkey, a lot of turkey. Of course, the turkey that I had was wild turkey. Uh, and they had a karaoke <laughs> machine downstairs in the basement, and I just got down there and got after it. You did? Yeah. At, at your family party? Yeah. It was a friend of mine's family. Okay. They invited me and, and at the time my two daughters. You were displaced. Uh, yeah. Yes. So I was displaced and I just went down and we started singing. And I don't remember what I was singing, but uh, my friend had walked down. And she goes, oh my God, I thought it was the radio. A so newfound talent. And so, then you were off to the karaoke races. Oh my gosh. I was done. And now I've got uh, probably, I want to say... I'm bordering on 300,000 cuts of karaoke. Oh, my gosh. If, uh, if you need it, I pretty much have it. So This is where to go for our karaoke. Club now Dubai we know. On now we know. Wednesday night. So I'm not going to make it tonight, but I will make it at a future Wednesday night. Okay. All and right. Bill is giving me a hard time because he's been working so hard to set up. I'm doing some big yawns over here. Yeah, I'm a little bit got, tired today. You, you and then him, yeah. Bill brought up the Fitbit. You don't have a Fitbit. Do you? Do you have a Fitbit? Something even, that monitors I don't even your know sleep? What a Fitbit is. Bill's wearing his that? Fitbit. And it monitors every, I love these devices. I, I have one, I ha, don't have it on, but it monitors not only how many steps you take every day, right. but your quality of sleep. Really? So Bill, is, you're, you're not happy with the quality of sleep that you're looking at, right? What does it how show? Does it, hang on a minute, where's your microphone? What, you Orange here, turn, step, it's talking to that mic. What, what's up with your sleep? My sleep pattern is very poor, apparently. Uh-huh. As I said the other night, I had two hours and 16 minutes of solid sleep. Like how does it deep know? Sleep, how does it know? Is it got its own little, does it have its own little brain? What, how does okay. it know that? I think it, it has to do with how often you twist and turn at night in bed. Or and also your gotcha. Fitbit is, I, I would guess that it monitors your pulse too, correct? I don't think so. It doesn't? Maybe, okay. Well, no, I don't think so. It just does steps. It's mostly um, uh, just movement, movement of the wrist. Movement while you're sleeping. So it figures out if you're in, you know, there are four or five stages of sleep, mm-hmm. the different stages of sleep, one, one through four, and then REM sleep. Does that sound about right? right. And so it shows, it tracks you in each of those stages. Oh. And what you'll find, we're all supposed to go through. And you have one six, of these Fitbit daily watch too? I do. And nice. what are we supposed to go through? About five or six cycles of that each night? Throughout the night. Yeah. Right. So my cycles, and they're supposed to last about an hour and a half each cycle. So my cycles are very like an hour a piece, and I'm a very light sleeper. So it's, it's really? fascinating what you learn about yourself. Wow! Through these fitness and then and so so how does this? I mean, what do you do? You take it off the internet, plug it into a computer, and it goes mm-hmm. to a chart, gives you data, or you just read it right off? It looks like a little watch. It logs like Bluetooth right into your right into whatever computer you have. Then right. you go online to the website, and you can check all your charts and everything. Keep your, your history and everything. Your iPhone. Sleep, your mm-hmm. steps. Does it give you suggestions on what you should do to get better sleep? Oh, it's got all yes. kinds of fitness stuff. Really? Diet stuff and water and water intake. 
Well, I, you know, my, it's a very my, cool thing. I, I would imagine, I, yeah, I don't think I have a very good sleep pattern, but I'll tell you what, I had a great sleep pattern over the weekend. Did you? Oh, because yeah. Because of wine. Well, yeah, we, had, I got a wine and actually, story. Wine is, wine is not supposed to help your sleep. Well, it did Morning. me. Let okay. me just tell you, there's been a couple of times. I'm because I'm not a. a, a are, you, are you a big drinker of wine? I love wine. Do you? That's all I'm, I drink. I'm not I don't a, drink anything else I'm, except wine. You know what? I'm a I'm a I'm a tequila guy, or I'm a Jack Daniels sort of a guy. Does tequila or or Jack Daniels, for that matter, ever make you angry? They uh, always say tequila makes you a little bit no angry. I, have well, you heard I've, that, Bill? But I have said vodka. Makes me forgetful. Vodka sort of makes me a little uh, on gets edge. me a little on edge. Yeah, okay. vodka will do. I'm, but I'm just not a very mean you don't person do it in, in the any first case, place. And you're a very sweet person. Yeah, so it doesn't. But vodka will kind of it. It yeah puts me a little on edge. But we had uh, you know we we go out with my Gasparilla crew. Crew of Black Bears Revenge. What what we uh we went out on Sunday to Ebor City. Okay. And we always start. Are they out- having some sort of Ebor City concerts there? Or something? You know, I've heard something about it. I was, okay. I was actually one of the things I needed to check on because okay. I did hear about that. But we, on Sundays, uh, a lot of the crew after uh, after church, we'll uh, head up to James Joyce over at the Irish Pub uh, over there on, on 8th, I believe. And then we end up on 7th Avenue at our favorite place because around 5 o'clock, my, uh, my good buddy Alan fires up the karaoke there at the Double Decker. The Doppel Decker. I just pictured the second you walk out these Beasley doors yeah. you're karaoke every step of the way a lot of times i am a lot mm-hmm. of times i'm running the show but uh, but we went over on friday and you know we were having a good time and kicking a few back and then uh, uh me and captain kid decided we were going to go back his wife is out of town my wife was out of town we decided we were going to get a couple of nice cuban cigars mm-hmm. and we were going to go back break out the acoustic guitar do some practice and what we call a practice night picked up another one of our buddies and we went over to his house and he's got a nice big pool area in right. the back and the hot tub and the whole nine yards. So the three of us out there smoking our cigars. Well, we had had a little dinner, and Daryl popped open a bottle of wine. Next thing you know, the bottle of wine was gone. It's Boone's funny. Farm? They, they, was it Farm? No, it was, it was the good stuff. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> it was Mad Dog 2020. Um, but he popped open a bottle of wine, and I had a glass with, with my dinner. And, and then he and, uh, and our friend Paul took the, care of the rest of it. And then he popped up with another bottle of wine. And we're just jamming. You know, we're having a good mm-hmm. time, smoking our cigars and being guys and uh, doing our thing. Well, that bottle of wine went. So then we decided, because of the mosquitoes, we went inside to uh, uh, to watch uh, Kenny Chesney was doing a big thing on CMT. Nice. And it was great. It was oh, a live bet. show and just millions of people. And we were all uh, dreaming about being rock stars and, uh, and, and doing our thing. That's all I remember. Really? I was sitting. Wa- really? the, the, I swear to you, the, the 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 I was watching TV, and that's it. I and I woke up at like two o'clock in the morning. It seemed like and said, "I gotta go." <laughs> what kind of wine was that? It You're was have red. To find it was out. some sort of red wine. But I'm going to tell you right now that there's Put been you under. yeah. When I've when I've been out on a, on a drinking binge or doing my thing, uh, you know, because I mean I, I'm I'm always in the in the limelight doing some sort of function. I always can handle my liquor, and I always remember the chain of events. I don't black out. I don't have things that I I do not remember. I remember coming in, sitting on the couch. I don't remember anything else after that except waking up at like 2 in the morning going, where am I, and why is that TV watching me? Everybody had gone on. Oh, that's and, a scary feeling. Yeah, it was great. And I've it's had only, those feelings many it's times. It's only not, happened to me not recently. twice. It's happened twice. to me twice, and both times it's been after a wine incident. The other time was when... Uh, my wife and I went to Trinidad to visit her family, and we went over to one of their friends' house, and they had some crazy port wine with horny goat weed. I was reading the back of the, the bottle the next day. You woke up with a tiger me, or a tattoo on your face. Yeah, I, yeah, I did. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you right now, I, I, I don't remember. And, and yeah, my wife was like, well, I... <laughs> and I slept for almost 24 hours. I was out. So, listen, if you have your little, th- your little watch thing that tells you you got a bad sleep pattern... I recommend red wine. There you go. Good? Do it. All right. right. I recommend it just for health overall daily. Yeah. Relaxation. It's supposed to be one Mm -hmm. glass, though, Mm -hmm. (laughs) not one bottle. Anyway, we got a great show lined up for you. We'll be back in just a couple of minutes here. It's Flash and Friends. Like our page. This segment is powered by Tampa Bay Nightlife.tv, Tampa Bay's video entertainment guide and home of Tampa Bay's top 20 things to do with a new show every Friday.
Hey, it's the Flashman, and if you haven't been to the Q105 Saturday Night Dance Party, then you're missing, missing out. out. Join me and my main man, Matt the Brad, pumping out all the hottest dance music from the 70s, 80s, and more. Mixed live at Club Dubai in Carrollwood. This week, every lady will get a raffle ticket to win a top designer handbag valued at over 300 bucks. $3 domestics and $5 select premium drinks all, all night. night. The Saturday Night Dance Party at Club Dubai. Doors open at 830 Northdale Boulevard in Dale Mabry in Carrollwood. Flash and Friends is powered by Extra Medium Productions, your high-definition, full-service production studio. Call 727-584-4500, extramedium.com. Hey, welcome back to Flash and Friends. Uh, Flash, uh, by the way, Rox, you look really good in yellow. I like that. You know I, that's what? a very thank good you, look for thank you. Thank you so much. Do you know that I've gone my entire life feeling that yellow was not one of my colors? Oh, what's one of your colors? I just started wearing yellow. Oh, it's nice. This is the second time I've worn this, and I like it. So thank you. I Thanks for it. noticing. Have you ever I gotten your colors it. done, anyone? My, no. Your colors? No, what does that mean? Where they, It's the coolest thing. And guys don't normally do this. More women do it, obviously. But I, I'm always trying to talk Doug into doing it. He Bill, you do ever it. got your colors done? No, I've you, never had colors done. You go, and, and the that consultant sits you down mm-hmm. and puts different swatches across you. Really? So, like, first she'll start off with kind of a gray swatch to get right. your pallor and see if you have rosiness in your cheeks or do you have more of a yellow undertone. And, of course, she's looking at your eyes, your skin, and your hair. But not as much your hair because of us women change our hair colors a lot, and men sometimes. In any case, right. um, right. she puts different swatches and sees if you're cool, you're warm, you're this, you're that. And at the end, you get this cute little book of all the colors that look good on you. And so you Where go do you to- even go to get something like that done? I- I'll show you. It's all my friend Lisa who does oh, it. Oh, hey, Lisa. Amazing. Hey, yes. Lisa. And so, in any case, you have this swatch with you. You go shopping. You never again buy a color that you don't like. Like, for girls, you have a wardrobe full of clothes, and you have this one outfit that you bought, and you thought you loved it, mm-hmm. and yet you never want to wear it. Half the time, you don't want to wear it because it's not your color. No kidding. Once you start dressing in your colors, uh-huh. oh, I find that the world is your oyster. I kind of dig, just- I kinda dig <laughs> blue. I, 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 I kind of think I look good in blue. I like the darker tones. What do you think? I think you, I think that would be because Even it would bring black. out your eyes, too. Yeah. Sure. I got the green eyes. So, guys, Boop. get your colors done. Really cool. Get your colors Doug. done. Lisa can Ask do that for do you. Well, that's cool. Oh, Lisa. <sighs> I have some other little fun facts for you. So, I just read that 85% of people have been in three serious... I find this, I find this surprising. Maybe this holds true for you gentlemen. 85% per, per, per people, per per mm-hmm. ha, percent of people have been in three serious relationships or less... In their lives. Guys, are you counting? counting? You're counting? Mm-hmm. I think it's pretty. of serious? Well, is... I I mean, seri- that's a good for question, you, that's Bill. Weeks, but Bill. I think serious is... <laughs> <laughs> two weeks for you, Bill. Something that's kind of extended. You know, I don't know. I mean, it's a good question, Bill. It's That's debatable. Six months? Um, Would that be a good indication? Yeah. Okay. Well, I'd, I'd go long. I mean, if I'm thinking about all the ones that I've been in for a long time. Right. I mean, I, I've I've sort of always, from, from the dating age, I've I've already, I've had a few where they've lasted a good good a bit, right. but but I don't think there's more than maybe Serious. six or seven at you know at the right. most. Okay, okay. It just seems that eighty five percent of people less than three series or three or less. Yeah. And I guess that would almost be a good thing, though, right? Right. If Does you think that about mean it? that you're just going from long relationships to long relationship to long relationship? Do you have dry spells in between? Are you serial dater in in which case that would make you have that number greater than three yeah so i'm a serial dater i don't know if you uh thought those were serious relationships Mm -hmm. yeah Mm -hmm. i mean serious in my definition you don't have to live with the person serious would be long term do things with the family Mm -hmm. families intermingled Mm -hmm. uh stay with each other most of the time that's kind of a serious relationship yeah Yeah, okay. I would agree. Yes, if you're if you're exclusive, exclusive is, with is a big part of that. Yeah, too. right. Yeah, exclusive That's, with someone. Yeah, and I yeah I found that you know through my life, you know even going through the teenage years, I always sort of had that one person. Yes. That I you know that I hung with, and if things didn't work out, then went on to the next thing. But it's I've kind always, of a serial dater. It sounds like Flash. Yeah, I mean I've always felt like I needed to be with somebody. I don't know why, but it just, that's clingy. how I'm wired, clingy, I, guess. Yeah. I guess. I'm a clingy dude. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I just kind of like the idea. I, I just kind of like the idea of if I'm going somewhere, I don't feel like the third you, wheel. You want to have a date? You yeah. Have, I don't feel like yes, the third wheel. Arm and, candy. And, you want to yeah. show off your property. That's yeah. it. That's my property <laughs> right there. Look, she ain't yellow. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I guess that would probably be accurate. I need, your, to it. I need your help with this one. And I bring this story up because this happened to a friend of mine. Okay, a woman legally changed her name 
not this exact story, but something similar. Mm -hmm. A woman legally changed her name to Gemeroid Gemeroid Von Lala to get access to her Facebook account. What? So apparently she... Like legally? She legally changed her name. So she'd set up a Facebook account with a fake name. Right. That is a no-no for Facebook. Ah. So she wanted this, but, but they didn't catch it initially. So she's going about her business with her fake named Facebook account. No kidding. They find out about it. Yeah. Well, in order to get access to it, she just said, okay, I'm going to change my name to this name. And then what are you going to do? Right. Well, she's done that, but Facebook still hasn't given her that access back. In any case, a friend of mine on Facebook had her account and she's got her 5,000 friends. Somebody started impersonating her Mm -hmm. and she reported it to Facebook. Like hacked her account? They no, they impersonated her, so they started going by her same name. Oh, gotcha. She reported it. Right. Facebook canceled her account. Oh, instead of the other yes. person. Yes. And it's so impossible to go undo all of that. So you have to be careful. Sure. I don't know yeah. what you do to be careful, but right. be careful. Huh. That's an interesting story. Yes. Changed her name legally to gain access to her mm-hmm. fake account. Boy, mm-hmm. I wonder how many. Yep. I wonder how many friends she had on the account. That she would do something like that. It must have been important. She could always I have, start a well, fan think page. About it, Especially you know that name, particularly. I, it's a strange name. Sometimes I get a little bit just overwhelmed with Facebook, and I'm like, oh, maybe I just don't want it anymore. Just because it's kind of, you feel like I'm going mm-hmm. on it too much, or I'm this or doing, wasting time is really my my thought of it yeah. sometimes. But you won't get rid of it. No. You won't. You can't. Because you, you can't know, get rid of that access at your fingertips to my access Facebook, to that database of people. I find that people just take take it too seriously, and I find also that uh, that people post they they just they just post too much of their of their dirty laundry on there. People use it as a as some place to vent, and I just don't think that that. When I'm posting, I'm usually posting because I'm going to be somewhere doing a karaoke show. Because you're flash. You're very or, easy. Yeah, posting something about be? yeah what we're doing to help a family in need or we're doing something that is positive. I always try to post positive things or something that just makes me belly laugh. If there's something that, that pops up that just makes me belly laugh, I'll share it. But that's the only things that I do. I don't like to air my dirty laundry out. On on, uh, I saw this thing, and I'm trying to think of what it said yesterday on Facebook. It was one of those little tag deals. And it said, back in the day, uh, we all kept diaries, and people got mad if you found it and read it. <gasps> that's, a, that's a good analogy. <laughs> now, that's insightful. Now, everybody's posting all their dirty laundry online for everybody to see, and you get mad when they don't read it. <laughs> and back in the day, you would have been so mortified yeah, if someone read all that. Somebody I mean, caught mortified. your diary, but now everybody's just popping it up on Facebook. Nobody or, or liked all the, my rant. Yeah, it nobody liked my rant. weird how it's almost been personality altering for some people oh now. Oh my gosh, yeah. They may still act the same in person, uh-huh. but on Facebook, you see these open information that you're like, oh, do oh, I really need TMI, to see all that? TMI, TMI. I personally don't want to be known. I mean, everybody has their own style, but I mm-hmm. don't want people to go look at my page and go, oh, there's Roxanne again complaining about nine million things. Oh, there she like, goes. I'm complaining right now, actually. Uh-huh. <laughs> about Only people. about one. Yeah. Well, <laughs> let me ask you this. Do you find that, uh, uh, and this is something else that uh, I think Paula uh, and I were talking mm-hmm. about yesterday. Paula Street. That uh, um, a lot of times you'll see people that are always posting the happy photos and the happy pictures, and they're having such a great time here and great time there, but they're the people that have the most Issues. They That's have the most usually problems. Misaligned. Yeah. Usually, if you're putting that photo that everything's right, they've done su- studies on this. Yeah. And if you're posting photos, for example, specifically relationship wise, the more photos, I'm having deja vu. I feel like I've said this before, but the more photos you post with your significant other about how great everything yeah, is, I with think heart we bubbles, talked about that a couple of shows back. Right. I, I believe we then did. The, then but the, yeah, that, I knew that I'd is, said it before. That is, that is, uh, and, well, maybe it was you I was talking to about it, but it just, you know, it's sort of an odd thing that, uh, you know, these people, and, and it's just so misconstrued. I mean, that, that they, oh, I'm having such a great time. I'm happy. I'm this, I'm that. Nothing can ruin my life. And then they're the people that are in the most distress of and all. And that's not life. And so then everybody who reads all of that and looks at all of that, all of us who are mm-hmm. on it, have, you have this these thoughts in your head that that's how life's supposed to be. The backdrop is supposed to be like that. And the backdrop is really... I feel Not like I've said this be like before, that. but it reminds me of that uh, Brad Paisley song, I'm So Much Cooler Online. <laughs> <laughs> online, I got a six yes. pack. Yes. A lot of people living like that. That's yes, it. it's true. It is true. I'm, I'm a model, everything else going on like that. 
All right, listen, we got a special guest coming up for you, somebody you've known for years if you've listened to uh, to Q105 for any amount of time or maybe grew up here in the Tampa Bay area from the Go Patrol. We'll have him on the show coming up right after this. Uh, Flash and friends, like our page. This segment is powered by TampaBayNightlife.tv, Tampa Bay's video entertainment guide. Hey, it's the Flashman, and if you haven't been to the Q105 Saturday Night Dance Party, then you're missing, missing out. out. Join me and my main man, Matt the Brad, pumping out all the hottest dance music from the 70s, 80s, and more, mixed live at Club Dubai in Carrollwood. This week, every lady will get a raffle ticket to win a top designer handbag valued at over 300 bucks. $3 domestics and $5 select premium drinks all, all night. night. The Saturday Night Dance Party at Club Dubai. Doors open at 830, Northdale Boulevard in Del Mabry in Carrollwood. Flash and Friends is powered by Extra Medium Productions, your high-definition, full-service production studio. Call 727-584-4500, extramedium.com. Hey, welcome back uh, to Flash and Friends from the Beasley Fishbowl in the Beasley Broadcast Group. And, hey, look who uh, who decided to roll in from back in the day, the Go Patrol. Pat George. Wow. You don't expect anybody to look at me when we're both on Talking the to Mike. I thought you were a professional. I can't hear you. No. Yeah. Right over here. That's yeah. very kind. We Well, we get to look at each other because if we can paint this picture for you inside this studio, this is the fishbowl where I sit, mm-hmm. and you have your own fishbowl right across the hall right over across at 1010. Yeah. Doing Money cool talk, stuff. 10, we 10, wave to each traffic. other through the glass. Yes. Every day. Man, listen, lots of cool stuff happening at uh, at Money Talk 1010. A lot of new shows coming on board, and uh, wow, we're excited about a whole lot of stuff. Okay. So. Pat, you, it was so fun talking during the break with you. You've got so many stories because you've been in the business for so long. But one of the stories that we liked best, so we'd love to share it with our viewers, is your son is going into the Air Force. He left yesterday. Oh, my son I left. told Pat I wanted to show the video so we can see him cry on camera. But, uh, you know, that maybe that might be too cruel for him. My son left for Lackland Air Force Base yesterday Yeah, for boot camp. Um, yes, he's a... Uh, He's going to be an Air Force man. Oh my God! Air Force guy. Listen, Air we're Force we're, Base. we're proud of you because I know you'll be watching as soon as you get the internet. But man, I, let me tell you, it was the funniest thing because I was on the air doing the afternoon show at Q105, and I was actually watching that video when you walked in yesterday to come in and say hello. And I went out, and he goes, "Well, I haven't even seen that yet." <laughs> what are the odds of that happening? Right? And right. I can't look. Right. I can't look at that anymore because every time I look at it, yeah, I'm going to yeah. cry. I got yeah. teared I'm up, like, and yes. I've never even met you him. Never met him. Yeah. Yeah. So you must be so proud of them. You raise your kids right. It sounds like they're really good kids. But as a parent, what is that like? You have so many mixed emotions with your child going into the military. And I say child because 18 to me is a child. Mm-hmm. And you're right. And he looks very, very young. Even when I was 18, he's I a mini like pet. He's a mini pet. He is. He is. He's um, a mini pet. It's very emotional because, you know, you've had him around the house for 18 years. And, you know, he's always the guy that's going to be out there helping you cut the lawn. And now he's gone. And no wonder he's, he's crying because he ain't got help cutting the lawn yeah. anymore. <laughs> And now here he is. He's in the thick of things. I mean, yeah. he is in the, you know, he's been um, a, like the leader for the Civil Air Patrol for Hillsborough County yeah. for about four years. And, uh, you know, it was like, it's kind of like Boy Scouts on steroids. Sure, but sure. Now here he is. He's in the Air Force. Well, I'll tell you what, man. I've had the privilege to hang out with him a few times. I've met you down for the Friday festivities at Villarda's uh, in Carrollwood. And I will tell you right now that uh, he is probably one of the best well-mannered gentlemen for that age group, oh. because, you know, I mean, th- look at our society. Today. We see it on the news every day, but he is probably one of the nicest and most considerate young gentlemen that I've ever met. He's an old soul. Yeah. And he loves to talk to more matured individuals. And if you see any of his pictures, he's always with an adult. Right. And, and if you ever have a World War II vi- um Veteran, uh-huh. he will set hours and ask questions about that. He just loves anything that has to do with the military. That's, and that's why such he's a, where he's at. Sure. Yeah, it's such a good quality to be a young person and want to hear what older people have to say because we all go through stages in our life. I'm sure, sure I went through a stage where I just thought my the center of my universe was me and, mm-hmm. and that's all I'm worried about. So to be a young person like that and want to reach out to older people and ask questions and hear stories, that's really that speaks to you raising him. So with his... With his training, what kinds of things did he do? Has he been able to tell you that's not classified while he's training at McDill? Well, he's been doing physical fitness, just getting ready for boot camp. But he did that in the Civil Air Patrol. Like I said, he was the leader of all that. So he kind of directed a crew of like 25 kids or young men and young women from the Civil Air Patrol. And uh, so he's been just practicing uh, his push-ups, his running, um, and, uh, and in the heat. 
because, you know, he's yeah. going to be now in the thick of things as far as August, right. September, uh-huh. in um, San Antonio, Texas. Oh, yeah. And they're well, going mean, to be running I, on that I, tarmac. I think Tampa Bay is probably a, a good training ground for that, Very especially good. the summer we've been having this uh, You know, and in Texas, you know, this it's dry heat. Yeah, so. yeah. So you can run and it doesn't mess your hair up so right. bad. <laughs> the humidity doesn't mess your hair up as bad. Oh, my goodness. But, yeah, just a great. And tell uh, tell everybody what you're telling us off the air that, uh, you know, exactly what his goal is, his overall goal. Well, I his love goal, this. ever since he's, you know, he was five, <clears throat> six years old, he always wanted to be in the military. He right. Always, he has respect for the flag. One of the greatest stories is that when we were traveling, uh-huh. anytime through an airport, he was seven or eight years old, he'd right. say, hold on a minute, he'd stop. And he'd go over, and I get goosebumps when I tell a story, right. but he'd go over to a soldier that was waiting for the plane, right. and he'd go up and shake their hand and say, Aww. thank you for your service. It's awesome. Aww. And I go, what are you doing? And he goes, this is what I want to do. And we've even had some of the soldiers come over and go, did you tell him to do that? No. Mm-hmm. I didn't even know he was going to do that. Right. right. And now I told him when he got ready to leave, I said, um, you know, they're going to come and do that to you now. They're going to find some young guy going to walk up to you and say, thank you for your service. And I just get choked up about that mm. because he is as patriotic as they come. Right. He stood up every day in school for 12 years and, and said the Pledge of Allegiance, even if the other students didn't do it, right. no matter what. Right. The flag, the uniform, you can't find, even when we watch a race mm-hmm. at home, mm-hmm. a NASCAR race, when the, you know, Star Spangled Banner comes on, he'll stand up stand in the up, living room. Take your hat off. hand over his heart. Sure. What a sweetheart. Like Mason does every morning. Certainly. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. That's why we do it. I mean, we got to salute our, our men. But tell tell everybody his overall goal. Oh, his the, overall the, goal the, the is. The big plan. I told him, I said, uh, okay, so you're going to stay in 20 years? And he goes, no, absolutely not. I'm going to stay in 30 years, and then uh-huh. I'm going to be president of the United States. How about well, Flash that? and I will vote for him. We'll be his campaign managers. That's How about it. that? That's when, it. He, when he graduated from Gaither, as he shook hands with the instructors going down, they said, you know, congratulations, Mr. President, because they – you know, they know he's pretty serious. He's about been that. touting right. that. He's been touting that for a while. I remember. I remember months ago you told me that. And he said, "I'm going to make sure I have no skeletons in my closet." He said, "The only Except skeleton for... is going to be you, Dad." <laughs> <laughs> I love it, man. And I'll tell you, if you know, for years and years, uh, uh, you and uh, even before I got there uh, with with Q105. I mean, it was you were the staple. You were the 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 go patrol guy out in the uh, doing the traffic for reports. many years doing traffic in the Bill Curry van along mm-hmm. with Deputy Mike and Nancy yeah. Alexander, yeah. Chuck Bear, the whole Arch gang. Deal. Yeah, and now I'm Money Talk 1010 doing. Yeah, stuff. that's great. It's great news. And and uh, so you got a show coming up. Uh, when is that? You starting Monday? The twenty. Start Monday. Okay, that's right. Rights and repairs. And the cool thing about this is, if you want to call in, you're going to be able to talk to attorneys that have a long heritage of uh, personal injury. Mm-hmm. If you have any kind of problems, you'll be able to call in, ask any type of question. There are three brothers, the Pernick brothers, mm-hmm. and there's um, Greg, mm-hmm. Tim, mm-hmm. and Terrence. Okay. The Pernick, and it's the law firm. And you'll be able to call in no matter what the question is. Plus, they're going to be paired with a guy who runs Collision Tech, Dan Cooley. Okay. So not only can you ask the questions about personal injury, about, you know, repairs with your cars. And one of the things that we'll be talking about and touching on is that, you know, an insurance company cannot tell you who you can take your car to. Right. And they can't tell you who can be your attorney. A one-stop shop for anyone who's been in an accident. Exactly. All your questions answered. Yes. And you feel comfortable because you can be anonymous if you want to. Right. And Rights I- and repairs. Monday, 10 a.m., and every Monday. And as the traffic guy, you know that we have plenty of accidents to talk about. It's a full segment on every it's station down, this, down, the, down the hallway. So uh, we, we, uh, we definitely are going to tune in for that. So good stuff, man. Good stuff. Can't wait to hear uh, that stuff going on for you. And, uh, man, thanks for being here on the show today. We appreciate it. Thanks you. for allowing me to come in, and uh, thanks for spotlighting my son a little bit. And, yeah. and of course, hey, listen. the new show starting on Monday. We are proud. We are certainly proud we of it. We will tune in. Hats off to you, my man. Thanks, Pat. All right. So, listen, lots of cool stuff happening. Of course, we got uh, Club Dubai Saturday night. I'll be all up in the house. We've got uh, karaoke every Wednesday now. Are you still? You're telling me you're coming. You're come. coming. I'm going to come. I know it's nine o'clock past your bedtime, <laughs> but you need to come. Pat, George, you Mine need to too. show up too. It's right around I, the corner I from your house. Me. We both get up Z's. very early to oh. come in and do traffic. You know, four thirty well, in the morning. Well, comes well, early. Well. You're getting home at that's, three yeah, thirty. Oh, so yeah. that's about We're time I go to bed. But I'm still here doing the show. So anyway, so you guys need to come out. Club Dubai, great place over off, right off Northdale, just west of Dale Mabry, and uh, right behind the Winn-Dixie Shopping Plaza there and the Genghis Grill and all that. It's right there. Uh, come on out and do a little karaoke with us. Lots of cool stuff happening. Uh, events, uh, you can check that out, myq105.com forward slash events. And make sure if you're here that you like our page. Yes, that easy. Just click like. And, of course, it is Flash and Friends, mm-hmm. but it's actually not and, it's n. N. 
In Lash N. N friends. In, in there. So uh, get on some of that. And we will see you. Uh, we'll see you back here next week in cyberspace. Hey, wave at the camera, everybody. Say goodbye. Uh, we'll see you next week.